So I wanted to make this video, which I think is long overdue, exploring or demonstrating the connection between light and gravity. There is this well-accepted idea that supposedly gravity uh, bends light or modifies light, the path of light. And I talked about this in, a, in my previous video about the refractive index of space. But it raises a question uh, like, can light modify gravity? If it's intense enough, if it's directed at a target, energy density of um, a beam of photons create a gravity field or a modified gravity field. I don't like the term gravity anymore because I think it, it, it denotes something that doesn't really exist uh, in and of itself. I think it's more a, an effect of modified, well, the modified refractive index or modified space time. So the experiments in this video are an attempt to explore that relationship um, between the presence of intense light and uh, how that may affect local gravity. According to the Cavendish experiment, um, which is uh, well known, which is a fundamental uh, foundational experiment that was done to prove or demonstrate the gravitational constant G. Uh, by having a horizontal balance set up where there's a couple of masses that interact with each other and due to their gravitational attraction uh, it causes the balance, the horizontal balance to turn um, horizontally and so a force is observed, an attractive force between the two masses and in the case of the classic Cavendish experiment that was lead spheres, uh, one would be a stationary sphere uh, one would be a smaller sphere mounted on the end of a balance beam. So what I've done in, in my experiment, in my setup here, is um, I don't use lead, but in this case I'm using, I have used lead, but in this particular case, which I'll show you right now in this video, I use two plates on each end, uh, or tiles, if you will, of ceramic material and the total weight is about four kilograms on each end. So that translates to about 16, 17, 18 pounds on both ends of the balance. So about, about nine pounds uh, on each end. So other influences uh, or um, um, research that I've come across which have demonstrated this relationship uh, were found in some published work by uh, Lewis Rancourt. On, um, his, his stuff is on uh, ResearchGate. And also Libor Newman, or Libor Newman published a paper. Uh, he did a bunch of experiments with a horizontal balance, uh, carefully controlled experiments. There's lots of data there uh, to uh, suggest, uh, strongly suggest that um, electromagnetic sources of energy, such as uh, various lights uh, used, uh, various light sources used inside of a tube. Uh, so instead of like in the classic Cavendish experiment where you have a large mass, like a lead ball, acting as a gravitational body, uh, instead of that, you, he used a, um, an electromagnetic source like a resistor, uh, an LED light, and an ordinary uh, type incandescent bulb as a gravitational source. And so these were immersed in tubes uh, on each end as a substitute for the classical uh, lead balls. And so what he found is that by energizing these light sources, he was able to observe a very strong correlation between when the sources were on and the deflection of the horizontal balance. So I'd recommend checking out those papers. I'll try to put some of the links in the description. Uh, Labor Newman, in his conclusion, he called it electromagnetic gravity. So um, the idea that uh, Electromagnetic energy in a volume of space or a region of space uh, has a, a characteristic of modifying the gravity of that space. And I, I think, I believe it's not modifying the gravity. I think it's that gravity is, is the modification. Again, not to imply that gravity is something separate or it's a separate... Uh, entity or phenomenon than just the modified uh, space um, from, an, from an energy density. 
I want to also mention uh, there's a curious little device a lot of you are probably familiar with. It's called a Crux radiometer tube or a uh, light mill. And so when you shine light on these little things, they, um, the little uh, propeller inside turns around. It's not a propeller, but you know, little uh, veins start to rotate. Uh, so particularly under a uh, light that has um, infrared content, um, but it'll work with even your hand or with, with a uh, cold on one side and hot. So if there's like basically like a temperature difference or um, even just shining like um, LED light will cause it to rotate. So there's been a few different theories that have been put forth as to why or how this works. But to my knowledge, no one has scaled it up or done a, a larger version of it with um, heavier heavier masses uh, instead of little tiny veins uh, in an evacuated uh, glass sphere. Um, to my knowledge, no one has done it like with, with a heavy heavy material or heavy plates uh, in, atmospheric, in atmospheric pressure. So that's kind of what I attempt to do in, these, in this experiment, which you will see. So my first few attempts at, at setting this up didn't work out so well. Um, I used uh, dumbbells, 10 pound dumbbells on each end. Later on I switched to the ceramic tiles because I think they had a, a better geometry. My first few attempts trying to replicate uh, Lewis Rancourt's claims in one of his experiments where he used a, a laser line between uh, the two masses um, so that it would sort of um, change the gravitational interaction between the two masses, uh, thereby causing more of an attraction between them. I tried to observe that and I wasn't able to with the uh, laser lines that I had uh, used. I had nine of them uh, stacked in, in a row. Um, I think what I would try next is putting them in a way so that the beams shine directly on the surface. And these are just five milliwatt lasers, so it's uh, very like negligible power levels to cause uh, heating effects. So I'm not too concerned about that. In some of these, in some of these clips here, it's it's uh, it was very hard to um, observe any differences whether the laser was on or off, and that's what I was looking for. So I went on to using a array of uh, LED bulbs, which are rated for about nine watts each. So in this particular array I had uh, measured a total about 80 watts of power being used. And they don't make too much heat. Um, they don't get that hot, maybe 50, 60 degrees Celsius peak compared to incandescent bulbs which can get up to well over 100 degrees, 100, 200 degrees Celsius. So uh, air, heating air was not a, not a huge concern uh, for that matter. I was also looking for heating on the surface of the tiles from using the LED bulbs and I didn't observe any significant heating, uh, maybe one or two degrees Celsius more overall. So I tried a few different experiments with the tiles and with the LED bulb array and what I noticed from the control, comparing the control to the activation state or the experiment. So the control is just looking for uh, the motion, uh, the pattern of motion uh, with the uh, the balance just left to itself. Um, it's deflection and frequency. And then, um, so I tried a few different arrangements of this. Uh, one with the, the bulbs on one side of the a glass plate which is about a quarter inch and then the um, the balance on the other side so having that barrier there would help to eliminate the possibility of moving air interactions so what I found is that there was indeed a, uh, a deflection uh, an attraction towards the bulbs I also tried putting the arrays of bulbs inside of the box with the balance. Finally I tried putting um, saran wrap right over top of the the plates and over top of the bulbs to reduce or eliminate the possibility of updrafts of convective air currents to cause any disturbance. And I found that the attractive 
phenomenon was still there. I also found that the attractive phenomenon remains for quite some time after the light turns off. So the bulbs, the, uh, the plastic housing of the bulb, the, um, the electronics remain hot for quite some time after and so does the attractive force. It seems to remain for quite a while after and you can see on the thermal camera, on the thermal images, the, um, the warm spots where the bulbs are. So as the temperature gets down again to like around 20 degrees, so closer to, to room temperature, um, this attractive force diminishes and then the balance goes back to its baseline. So in conclusion here, it, uh, it appears to me that there is definitely an interaction between light intensity and gravitational force. And in this case, because it's a horizontal effect, it would suggest to me that the, the gravity of the uh, balance plates or the tiles is actually being... Well, maybe I won't use the word gravity, but... Um, might say gravito inertial mass of the plates or the it is being or the inertia of the plates is being uh, disrupted or imbalanced so it tends to want to move in that direction towards the source and it appears that heating is not a cause like heating air and causing air movement is not not the cause of this effect but I try to keep this in mind as I, as I do these experiments and to eliminate that possibility as much as I can because it can be a source of error. Anyways, I hope you like this. Uh, comments are welcome. I'll probably be doing more work with this, these types of experiments and different arrangements. Uh, so welcome ideas. Until next time, thank you.